Hello, um, we're talking about a Thai book today, or a book by a Thai author, um, by Prabda Yoon. This is Moving Parts. It's been translated by Mui Pupuk Saku. I hope I said that right. Um, it's And the publishing house behind this is Tilted Axis. I think I've talked about them a couple of times, but they are UK based. Um, they do incredible uh, translations. Like the selection is really good if you are someone who are interested in like Southeast Asian, East Asian books, which is primarily what I talk about. Um, they're like a really easy way for me to find books by authors from countries that are not maybe like very prominent on the bookshelves of places like Waterstones or Dawn Books, etc. Anyways, um, I feel like nowadays Tilted Axis is becoming really, really popular. But back like even five years ago, I don't remember seeing as much of Southeast Asian representation in kind of high street bookstores here in the UK, uh, which is really nice. This is a short story collection. I was in um, a bookstore a couple of weeks ago and this really nice girl who worked at the store, she was from Vietnam and we started talking about um, Korean books and Han Kang and this and that. And I was telling her that actually I really, um, and I really wanted to read books from countries that I haven't really read much from, primarily Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines. Uh, Philippines is a big one because I feel like that's a country like I've across the board struggled to find anything that's like even remotely popular. Um, but yeah, she recommended this one and then another Thai book called Chinatown. Sorry, not Thai, Vietnamese book called Chinatown. But this particular one, she did say that he has quite, like he's quite a known author, as usual, like sounds. Um, but I didn't really look much into him, but I did go and lock in the fact that I read this book on Goodreads. And a lot of people said that another book of his, I forgot what the name was, I might put it up here. Um, this is, they like that one better, but obviously I didn't have any comparison to make. This is my first time reading. I would say like I watched quite a few Thai movies. And I, I mean, everyone's watched Girl From Nowhere. I feel like that's very popular. But in general, I wouldn't say that I'm completely oblivious to Thai culture or Thai people. I've been to Thailand, so it's like, I know a little bit about the country and the people, but this book definitely, I feel like it's not something that you could read out of context. I think a little bit of understanding of the culture really helps because then you get the small nuances in the book, you understand them much better. Although this is a pretty much a very light read and I don't mean that the subject matter is light. I think it's a very, it's written in a way that's very easy to read. So the print isn't like, the print isn't too, too big. You can really breeze past this very quickly. But I would ask people to read this um, kind of one chapter at a time. I had put this into my bag and I was reading it during my commute to work. So I would read one chapter in the morning, one chapter in the afternoon. But I feel like when I read this, every single story started off pretty normal and then it took just like a weird turn. I guess you could call this magical realism, um, but not all of it, some of it. Um, as the name suggests, moving parts, actually the name does not suggest that, but it is about different body parts and the um, overall, I guess, what it actually signifies or there's like a hidden be meaning behind it. Um, this probably puts a good kind of beginning to the story. So it's a noun for body, shape, form, or figure, and the verb would be to draft or to sketch. The Thai word leaves open two possibilities, the body as a mere rough sketch of the self, and at the same time, its foundation. These stories in this collection explore these interlocking aspects of our physicality. But overall, there are, I believe, 11 stories, and they all talk about one um, aspect of the human body and kind of explore different stories by putting those parts at the center of the story. I think I gave this a four out of five stars because maybe one or two stories was like not 100% like I thought it was okay but the rest of them I really enjoyed. The ones that I found I guess most intriguing would definitely be Evil Tongue. I found the whole atmosphere around Destiny's uh, um, good. Did not enjoy Feet First at all. Um, Mocktail and New Hand were kind of like in between. I really liked A Hairy Situation, um, Long Heart and Evil Tongue. I guess those were my kind of top three. Only because I feel like if you 
put them out of like if you take them out of this book and you create movies on each one of these situations i would probably want to watch them i don't want to spoil any of them because i feel like this is definitely worth a read but i will give you a general premise on like if you if you think about like how you know a lot of stories can be told in a way that you put the character at the center of it right it's a lot of emphasis on whether the person is good or bad or like if the person has set morals and this and that but i feel like these stories are told in a way that puts the person almost like at the kind of background and puts society at the forefront these people in themselves don't really have much of an introduction or like who they are or what they're you just kind of follow their actions and what they're doing and it's a very situational um stories there are certain times where people have no other option than to do what they do and yet people tend to question like oh i'm sure they could have done something else i'm sure there was another way to deal with the situation but it basically my takeaway from the book was that in a lot of situations we sit there and we talk about what other people should have done because we don't want to experience it ourselves and we know that we almost feel like you know that could never happen to me but had it happened to me i would have done this this and that and in all of these stories it almost makes if you are someone who thinks that way it almost makes a joke out of you because it says like yes you know there are a thousand different ways which you could have gone about something but also nobody truly understands that there's so much backstory to each of these stories or like there's so much background to each of these situations and there's so much context that is at play that people almost miss out because we're so um focused on the headliners so a good way to present this is that when you're reading a newspaper you know you see the headlines and let's say you read 20 headlines you google something you see you know something about a celebrity and you see the 10 top 10 google search results and what they say people often don't take the time to read through all of those or fact check things that they read even or just look at things more i guess critically um, and those snapshots of information give us a very skewed idea of what's actually happening most of the time we don't even get it from the source itself it's obviously gone through multiple people before it's come to us and in that kind of a situation it's very important to us like what is it about society that makes people jump to conclusion about certain things and also how much you know we have become so immune to things as people and i think that i see as the second common theme or the kind of like a theme that jumped out which is let's say you know like we're walking about and we see things happen that are very disturbing but we as society have come to almost like say in like oh oh no, no that happened and then move on from it really really quickly almost alarmingly quickly but it's not people's fault that they move on alarmingly quickly it's because of the things that have happened over the last hundred years or so and the way society has evolved you cannot put the blame on one certain person for behaving a certain way yes you can tell people that oh my god that is traumatic how can you move on from it so quickly but at the same time you don't know how much they've had to see and go or like you know experience for them to become so immune to these things obviously there's the other hand you know there's the argument that some people need to be more sensitive to certain things and they need to understand but i don't know if the blame can be put at an individual level considering this large group of people who behave that way and it also does a really good job of putting this cast of very <laughs> intriguing characters all seemingly morally gray most of them and some of them very neutral but it doesn't really tell you even a suggestion of like whether the author thinks this is a good or a bad person or if they are like a protagonist or not it just tells you stories about people experiencing different things there's even you know things in here that are clearly illegal or taboo that the author seemingly just talks about very nonchalantly and i think that is something that i find as a recurring theme in thai um not just literature obviously but in general like thai works of art where they do a really good job of like just removing that filter and saying and portraying things as they are and almost ha having this like campy side to it where they kind of exaggerate only certain parts but so subtly that it is still very very believable whereas you know every single culture has their very 
unique way of doing things and I feel like that's something that I really appreciate about anything that is like very condescensionally Thai which is it's very filterless, very bold. Over the last couple of years I've read quite a lot from I would say South Korea, um, Japan and a bit of Vietnam but I haven't done a lot of reading in the other Southeast Asian countries and I want to read more from them so if you have any recommendations let me know and I would really appreciate if you have any recommendations by authors from this country that are like born and still live there instead of people who are like you know American Thai or um, Canadian Thai or anything like that only because um, I, would, I would be very intrigued to read from people who are still a part of their society so like contemporary if you do give it a read let me know what you think and I'll see you next time